Ghost of the Future Issue 17 It starts out with the ghost form of Sonic in a special stage searching for emeralds, with Silver and Blaze too. Silver says to him that the radar is getting all beep happy. They're right on top of it. So, why weren't all of the emeralds in the special stage? I've read all of this comic by this point, and some of them are just completely different dimensions for no reason. The floor breaks beneath Silver and Blaze, but they're not hurt, just caught by something sticky out of complete nowhere. Then they see some bees being held captive by robots. Sonic destroys the badniks furiously, but for some reason, Tikal tells him to stop and accuses them of letting his anger blind him, saying the innocents are in danger. Yeah, and he was defending them! He's doing what he's normally doing against badniks. She accused him of wanting to turn that anger on his friends. That came out of nowhere. Anyways, the radar says the emerald's headed east. Wouldn't Sonic have just destroyed the robot that had the emerald and gotten it already? I thought it was nearby. They see a big metal dome, and Sonic goes in, and Silver uses telekinesis to get away in a few minutes later. Why would it take more than a second? Then a text box says, Meanwhile nearby, and we see the Fleetwood version of Sonic, which is made clear as soon as we see that it's the Omniviewer talking to him. Pretty sure Vector made it possible for Sonic to go to the special zone whenever he wanted without needing the Omniviewer. Sonic says this is the best shot he's had at getting Kid Deport back from Robotnik. Omni asks what Robotnik's doing out here when the Egg Fortress has been abandoned for years. He says that if he gives him a minute, he could pick up the rest of the team. But Sonic says confidently that he can handle this himself. He'd look more sympathetic if he said that he doesn't want them to risk getting hurt. Somewhere deep in the fortress, we see a more unhappy Dr. Zachary than usual holding a coffee cup, and he's warned about hull failure, and warns Robotnik about a priority one situation as Silver and Blaze are running by animal capsules. I'm just forced to assume that the Fleetway universe has time at a different speed than Silver's future so that this makes sense. One of them has a slower Chronotron feel than the others, if the Rick and Morty comics told me anything. Blaze said that the mansion of Silver's family has a badnik vault full of old weapons and robots. Silver uses his magic against some robots, and a Beemobian tells Blaze to forget the emerald after thanking her, saying that it's crazy to go up against Robotnik. Meanwhile, Sonic angst is saying that it can't be him, and Ticole hugs him from behind and puts her hands on his shoulders, saying that it'll never happen again. Since I read the first issue of this band comic, I know that she's probably talking about the time Shadow was brainwashed to kill him in the first place. She holds his hand as they fly, and she admits that she needs him too. It's not like their personalities are that similar to each other, but at least they make each other feel better. It'd certainly be easier for them to enjoy all of eternity if they're kissing each other a lot. We see the Kid Deport computer still opposed to Eggman. Am I supposed to believe he was too advanced for Robotnik to reprogram to his side? There's a reason I used to assume that happened to him. He hears to Cole and says that if anyone can hear him, he needs help because he's held here against his will. Sonic sees two of their Chaos Emeralds. How does he know that they're his? He's freaked out at seeing Sonic, and then Fleetway Sonic shows up and casually greets Kindabor and meets Sonic. Meanwhile, it turns out that the reason Sonic's escapades with Robotnik weren't in the history books and were only in the new Chaotix archives is that Gun covered it up because of the evil Nicole pulling their strings. Blaze says that she doesn't know why she cares though. Then that better be explained at some point if it's lampshaded. Because in this comic, Nicole was made by Eggman, so why would she be asking why she cares? I don't like that. They reach a dead end say something's coming, and we see a Metalix. Meanwhile, Fleetway Sonic inexplicably assumes that the Ghost Sonic is something Robotnik put together and says he'll deal with them in a bit, and abandons him by ignoring him. Kintobor says that Robotnik's forcing him to build a new rock with the two foreign emeralds inside. Why? Why would Robotnik, while he's still evil, make a machine to remove all of the world's evil from the world? The writer looked up the issue that The Rock was built in to know what the acronym stood for, and apparently still didn't know what it did. I mean, why would Robotnik make a machine that can only have a good result? 
Then they get threatened by Zachary, some harmless badniks, and Eggman and his Eggmobile. And it's absolutely ridiculous that Silver merely throws stuff at Metzlux with his telekinesis, instead of grabbing him directly and defeating him easily. This is just stupid. He was a lot more competent against Sonic in his fight with him in 06 than this. So Metal Sonic immediately magically knows how to deal with him by grabbing and hurting his palms when he just met him. Sure, his palms are glowing, but he obviously wouldn't have survived getting this close up to Silver. All this reboot saw wimpification of Silver just to give Blaze some time to attack Metal Sonic instead. Blaze says she'll get Silver out of here. And it turns out Robotnik made a spectral shielding just for Sonic after he observed his world. How's he able to make that with science? That's not fair. Tikal tries to go after the Emeralds, and she screams for some reason. And Zachary says that the rock can wait and he can work with this because she's an echidna spirit. Once he recognized Tikal, he's from the ancient past too. She tells Sonic that she needs help because she's trapped in this machine. Conveniently, that's something that science can do. Sonic flies past Fleetway Sonic, who doesn't want it to risk going super. For some reason, Sonic's still lying on the floor when Eggman confronts Tikal and Silver. So Tikal takes the wrong Sonic through the warp ring in a hurry, with Eggman agreeing to let them pass, since they could get rid of Sonic for him. In the next issue, I'm expected to believe that Shadow thinks Sonic is possessing Sonic. Why would Ghost Sonic stay in Sonic after going through him, when he wants to pass by him? Why did he decide to stay in him and possess him instead? There's no sign of him here. It just seems like he vanished. That's what's so confusing. Every time he possesses someone other than this, the person doesn't faint. And he's immediately able to control him just fine. So this doesn't seem like any other time, so it doesn't immediately come off as what it is. It's just needlessly confusing. I guess with all the crazy stuff that happens in their lives, including Sonic being brought back to life after being brought into the Arabian Nights, it could make sense that they'd assume that Fleetway Sonic is Sonic. I'm just not sure why Fleetway Sonic passed out though. Eggman says to Zachary that they know where they went and can pursue them with the fortress. This story by Evan Stanley was about Fleetway Sonic finding Kintobor in the Special Zone, and apparently he's being forced to build a new rock of all things, which was supposed to suck out all of the world's evil, and yet Robotnik's still evil. At that point, it would have made more sense to just go simplistic and uncreative and just have it be another death ache. And it gives to Cole and Silver a running start, and plans to follow them when they take Fleetway Sonic to their dimension. It makes sense that Silver and his friends met them while searching for a Chaos Emerald in the Special Zone. Because that's a place that both of them would want to go to. The next issue of Ghosts in the Future isn't even done yet. Oh well. <laughs>